Table manners in our day and age are at an all-time low, so I take it upon myself to help re-educate you. Let's see here. Good manners at the table. Family reunions at meals should always be rendered pleasant and agreeable. The occasion is a proper one for the observance of all social enmities, and should be marked by the most kindly interchange of thought and feeling. The minor etiquette of table must always be remembered and observed. Over haste and eating is as rude and vulgar as it is unhealthful. No family is too poor to have a table covered with a clean white cloth, ornamented with flowers in their season, and made inviting with refined manners and cheerful intercourse. Chissa, what are you doing? I'm trying to do a video. That's what I thought. Anyway. As soon as you are seated, place your table napkin across your knees and put your roll or bread on the left side of your plate. As soon as you are helped, begin to eat. If the villains are too hot, take up your knife and fork and prepare to begin. Never wait for others, never offer to pass on the plate to which you have been helped, at least unless there should be no servant in attendance. I do hate when there's no servant in attendance, don't you? The lady of the house who sends your plate to you is the best judge of precedence at her own table. Soup and fish should never be partaken of a second time. Whenever there is a servant to help you, never help yourself or others unless requested to do so. When the servant is near, catch his eye and ask for what you want. To make a noise of the mouth or lips while eating chisa that hurts like you would not believe. Ha! Oh, you little vermin. To make a noise with the mouth or lips while eating or drinking, uh, to breathe hard, or to cough or sneeze without covering the face with a napkin, to drink a whole glass full at once, or to drain a glass to the last drop, is inexpressibly vulgar. <sighs> yeah, I can see that. The knife must never be carried to the mouth, nor should the spoon be used unless the nature of the food absolutely requires it. The bread by your plate is to be broken, never cut. Mustard, salt, etc. are put on the side of the plate, and one vegetable should never be heaped on top of the other. Good heavens. The wine glass, if used, is held by the stem, and never by the bowl. Excuse me. Good heavens. And the plate must never be tilted on any occasion. In eating, one must not bend the head voraciously over the plate, extend the elbows, rattle the knife and fork, or soil the tablecloth. But he must be quiet and gentle in all his movements. Anything like greediness, haste, or indecision is ill-bred. Never take the choicest piece, nor take up the piece and lay it down in favor of another, nor hesitate as to which piece you will take, or whether you will take one at all. To be particular about such trifles is a degree of selfishness which is inconsistent with good manners. There are different ways of disposing of the stones and seeds of fruit, such as cherries, plums, raisins, etc. They should be conveyed from the mouth and deposited upon the side of the plate in the least offensive manner. Very dainty feeders press out the stones with the fork in the first instance and thus get rid of the difficulty. This is the safest way for ladies. In the best regarded uh, regulated households, meal to be served at regular hours, and every member of the family should be prompted in attendance remaining in his seat. <coughs> if possible, until the repast is finished. <coughs> what happens? It is considered a mark of grossness to discuss the quality of food upon the table, whether good or bad, or to handle or touch with the fingers the food that others are to eat. To remain long in the dining room after the ladies have left is a poor compliment to both the hostess and her fair visitors. Still worse is it to, jo to rejoin them with a flushed face and impaired powers of thought. A fine gentleman is always definite. If you should unfortunately be so awkward as to overturn or break anything, never apologize for it. For there is simply no possible excuse for such a blunder. If you send your plate to be helped a second time, it is well to hold your knife and fork in the left hand. Lady of the house should n send, never send away her plate, nor appear to have done eating till all her guests have finished. Nor should she reprove her servants for being uh, before guests, nor make excuses for anything that may go wrong. 
All well-ordered dinners begin with soup, whether it is summer or winter. The lady of the house should help, help to it and send it around without asking each individual in turn, as it is much an understood thing as the bread besides each plate. But those who do not choose it are always at liberty to leave it untasted. A finger glass containing water slightly warmed and perfumed is placed before each person at dessert. In this you dip your fingers, wiping them afterwards on your table napkin. If the finger glass and doily are placed on your dessert plate, you should immediately remove the doily to the left hand and place the finger glass upon it. It need hardly be said that the proper place for eating is at the table, and food or other foods should not be eaten in the streets or at public assemblies where it is not provided for at all. Well-bred persons will always observe the properties, the proprieties of time and place. Never play with any of the things upon the table or handle them idly, or make a grating noise with your chair on taking and leaving your place. <coughs> Avoid hasty movements and be sure that the food never falls from your plate upon the tablecloth. However, pour the scantity of the fare, let it be partaken with a cheerful disposition and a proper observance of forms. Ow, ow, the rat just bit my nipple.